Okay. Day one, the wolf of Main Street. All right. What exactly am I doing here? Good looking out. Oh, uh, it's just sitting on the tripod. Just grab the thing. I'm almost done. Okay. Grab the camera while you wait. Oh, okay, so I just kind of... Okay, I kind of walk over stuff. <clears throat> Welcome to the newsroom, rookie. This is the heart and soul of the local news. The most popular streaming service of the Butterfly Valley. Oh, okay. Well, the one and only streaming service of the Butterfly Valley. But certainly the most popular. I've been waiting to finally meet you. I mean, at least for 30 minutes. You can't act that slow. In news business, speed is everything. Things are really starting to snowball here, so I'm in desperate need of help. But remember, I don't need a sidekick. Cliff Rockside is a lone wolf, like all wolves are meant to be. Saul Goodman! <laughs> also, super awesome to hear you're not in it for the money. Kids these days are all about get rich or take selfies trying. I don't care too much for money and look how far it got me. Just follow my lead and it could be you running a news agency from a garage in just a few years. I'm getting ahead of myself. You must have a gazillion questions, but let me ask first. Have you ever worked with news? Um, I'm gonna answer no. Not a problem. You just have to get into this DU DUI mentality. Or <laughs> was it DIY mentality? Anyway, the point is you'll learn this by doing. We are the messengers of the truth. We serve one master and one master only. The holy of the holiest, journalism. We are bound by its laws and it governs us to uncover everything that wants to remain hidden. Ain't nothing more beautiful than that. Are you comfortable with moving and interacting with the environment? Yeah, sure. That's the spirit. There's really nothing much to it. Follow my lead and point the camera to the right direction. You can zoom with mouse, wheel, or your gamepad's trigger buttons. Yeah, yeah. Some footage needs to be captured when zoomed, other stuff in a broader picture. Just remember the golden rule of outlining. Green is for whites, green purple for zoom. Why don't you give the zooming a go? Frame my sweet arcade machine on the shot. Excellent. Okay. Frame my flat screen for a wide shot. Great, I knew you could do it. Now that we've gotten the obvious stuff out of the way, let's talk a bit about what we're, we're doing here. Like I said, I run the biggest streaming service around here. We report everything. My dream is to gather over 100 subscribers so that I could dip into the sweet, sweet advertising money. When we get there, you'll get your cut too. You can see the subscriber count on the top right corner of your camera's viewport. I'm off to a good start and I expect to hit double digits next week. With your help, maybe even sooner. People generally subscribe when they like the content and unsubscribe if they dislike. Uh, so you'll have to point your camera carefully. Getting an, audience, getting an audience is hard, but losing it is easy. Hello? Was that a fucking explosion? <laughs> I'm not doing this in the moolah, but, just, uh, but a little economical gain is a good motivator. Just remember, we're in this for the journalism. We need to keep our audience happy, so focus on the footage you're shooting. We don't want to scare them away. I don't expect you to know everything off the bat, and I will reward you for your work with these awesome star stickers. Cliff Rockside's appreciation is way more valuable than money. That's pretty much it. Let's get to reporting. Stream engaged. We got ourselves one heck of a story to kick things off. My sources report that Mrs. Riverbend has a giant pumpkin in her front yard. This might be a wild goose chase. We need to check it out. Run like the wind. News never sleeps. Whoa. Oh, we're, we're running, huh? <laughs> we are actually running. Wow. <gasps> There's a dog. Breaking news. Oh my god. Hello, this is Riverbend. Well, hello there, young man. Are you here for your internet home video? It's called a stream, but yes, I am. I want you to be my new associate, the camera person. Nice to meet you, dear. I'm so happy that Cliff doesn't have to be alone anymore. What the? We're here about the pumpkin. My source, my source didn't lie. It is humongous. This is Cliff Rockside. I'm reporting live from the yard of Mrs. Riverbend. She has, <laughs> she has made a botanical history with her out of this world pumpkin. Mrs. Riverbend, tell us everything. Well, I was pretty surprised when I found it in my garden. I planted the seeds yesterday, and the pumpkin had broken through my greenhouse windows last night. It took me ages to drag it here. <laughs> you mean this happened overnight? It sure did. I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. Not even in the 60s, and back when we had plenty of plant-related weirdness going on. That's incredible. This is Riverbend. Th this indeed is one of the most spectacular things my eyes have ever witnessed. What are your plans regarding this record-breaking natural wonder? I don't know. 
a pumpkin pie from this could be, feed an entire army. Obviously, I'm not going to do that since I've been strictly anti-war for decades. So, if you're hungry for a huge pumpkin pie or for world peace, remember to contact Mrs. Riverbend. We'll keep you informed on this developing story. Thank you, Mrs. Riverbend. Do you have anything to add? Any final thoughts? Well, we might want to talk to Haas Beaverton. I brought a flask of new manure from him, and I suspect that it has something to do with this. Haas Beaverton. If we just had this manure in the 60s, it would have been flower overpower. I can't imagine what kind of animal could produce something this potent. Haas could cure world hunger. World hunger? Haas Beaverton? That would be the day. Anyway, this is local news with Cliff Rockside. Thank you, Mrs. Riverbend, for the story, which certainly got me gasping for air. Remember, remember to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Always a pleasure, dear. Say hello to your mom for me, okay? Her thing was a rubber band. Not terrible. <laughs> the explosions are so loud. <laughs> so, hey, hold on a minute. I'm so thirsty from all this writing and reporting. I could really use a cup of coffee at this point. You gotta stay hydrated. I don't think that's hydrating. And this goes to the viewers as well. You can never drink too much water. You can never drink too much water. You can easily drink too much Tabasco sauce, for example. Or ink. Actually, <laughs> actually, any amount of ink is too much to drink. Well, and over the crucial health tips. Uh, I'll, I'll race you to the coffee shop. What? You got a head start? Come on, dude. This isn't fair. He started running as I was reading. That's crazy. Well, if it isn't the local law enforcement. Hi, Cliff. How's everything going? Any uh, interesting news stories to share? Don't encourage him. I just want to eat this donut of mine in peace. Is that too much to ask? Here's a breaking story for you. A police officer needlessly distracted by a grown man pretending to have a job. Sergeant Rick and Pecker. Ricks and Pecker. Life in the local news business is always busy, but I'm never too busy to catch up with the police. Do you have any news for me? Or the stream audience? You and actually my first choice for trusty, trustworthy media person around this town. But to I can't talk today. But to tell you the truth, we only have the same old story. Nothing special going on. Nonsense. You just have to keep your eyes open. We just reported a major news event regarding a pumpkin the size of a small car. I bet you didn't know about that. Wow, that does sound amazing. I told you don't encourage him. And no, it, we didn't know about it because we don't have jur jurisdiction over attraction-hungry vegetables. Okay. <laughs> so what are you doing here? Are you hunting down dangerous criminals or just ensuring the safety of the good people of Butterfly Valley? Currently, we're investigating if the sound of an annoying, streaming man-child can be ignored with a very determined donut eating. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Cliff. Nothing newsworthy to give you. I don't think that the low quality of coffee in this place is the actual news for anyone. Dang, I was hoping for a scoop. My audience craves for an ex uh, exclusive content. Shut up, twerp. Okay. <laughs> Riggs, did you hear something? Yeah, some weird noises coming over from the gas station across the street. Tell me you got that. What the heck happened? Come on, Riggs, let's hustle. I hope no one got Breaking hurt. Uh-oh. This is reporting. There's a dog. She was Mr. Pecker. That was some loud bang. Sweet cheese and crackers, son. What the heck happened? Well, at first I was jamming hard on this guitar solo playing on the rodeo. Then I ran into a pothole and the van doors open. Good thing the barrel rolled out before it exploded. This is Cliff Rockside and I'm bringing you exclusive content. Do you realize what could have happened? You're right next to a gas station. I'm so sorry. I didn't know that gas station owners are super afraid of explosions. <laughs> How did they survive the 4th of July with all the fireworks going on? You dimwit. You could have destroyed half the town with your shenanigans. What was in that barrel? I don't know, miss. I was supposed to deliver it to the farm. Haas Beaverton told me to pick it up from the woods. There was just the barrel, nothing else. Dear viewers, this is a live report of a massive explosion which happened only minutes ago. Okay, we need to calm the situation. This is going to end real bad, and it still can. Uh, so let's not waste any time. There you have it. An official statement from the fire department of Butterfly Valley. We avoided a real uh, catastrophe here. <laughs> There's an unavoidable personal... Unavoidable personal catastrophe coming for you if you don't shut your pie hole. Take it easy. Cliff's just doing his job. Shooting home videos for a handful of nerds counts as a job. 
Those nerds have the same right to know the truth as anyone. Secondly, there's now at least two handfuls of them. Hey, Mr. Pecker? What? Can I go? I really need to get to the farm. You're not going anywhere. We're going to go to the police station to figure this out. To the police station? You're in big trouble, sonny boy. Dear viewers, it looks like things are escalating. Pecker, you know that our work requires calm conditions. Could you start assuring them by giving us some peace from the media? My pleasure. You turn off the camera right this instant. And there you have it, folks. Butterfly Valley Police Force is trying to suppress freedom freedom of press. One more peep out of you, and you're coming with us. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well. Epic reporting. Epic. Holy shit. <laughs> that was really fun. Wait. <laughs> I like that it's almost like you're kind of directing the cutscenes. Like, it's it's really interesting. <laughs> okay. Sheesh, that was intense. They sure left in a hurry. Too bad they took everything newsworthy with them. Since my body is carrying an exceptional mind, I have to give my body a bit of a rest. Also, we need to think about our next move. All the arrows seem to be pointing at Hoss Beaverton's farm, but we can't go confront him without anything concrete. Maneuver can be explosive, so there's nothing we can pin ha on Hoss yet. We need to dig deeper. I'm pretty sure Jeb wasn't alone. I think I saw someone running away from the car. This is a perfect opportunity for you to learn about investigative journalism. I'll take a breather where you go and chat with eyewitnesses. <clears throat> I suspect there's plenty of them at the gas station. And while you're there, say hi to Doug for me. Can I say hi to this dog? <gasps> Wait. <Barking news. laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay that was incredible actually game of the year game of the year <laughs> that blast was epic that's the kind of stuff you normally see only in video games here i was minding my own business when suddenly boom man i'm lucky to be alive i saw jeb driving the van we used to play football in high school jeb got well quite a few hits in his head he wasn't going to be the Nobel Prize winner even before that. So I was really surprised to see him driving a car and not surprised at all to see him cause an accident. I thought that farm would be a workplace safe enough for him. Um, farm? Last time I spoke with Jeb, he said he was working for Hoss Beaverton. He had big plans for himself. He said they were doing something revolutionary in his fertilizers. He got all worked up. He was talking like he's the founder of some huge tech startup. All that over manure, not rocket shoes or afternoon trips to the moon over an animal poop replacement. This is crazy. How does one even create a billion dollar fertilizer industry? I bet it's really hard to get super trendy with something super smelly. But some very smelly people have made millions in their garages, so I guess it's possible. Pretty crazy. Ooh. Pretty crazy that explosion, huh? Uh. <laughs> I could just say no? <laughs> Wait, I could just say no? Yeah. I mean, I've never seen anything like that. And yet, I don't feel scared at all. Isn't that weird? Okay. I guess my generation has witnessed so much bad stuff in our lives that we've grown numb at everything. Take that cup of latte I had a few moments ago, for example. How could I have any hope for a better future while having coffee that awful? It's a clear sign that humanity has given up. You were there, right? Did you see the girl? Uh. I wonder what she was doing there. She was in a hurry. I don't think the cops saw her. I'll probably try to find her. That's what I would do. I'm willing to bet she's one of the summer residents of the cult. Cult? Every summer they attract a bunch of young people to the lakeside. Cult? Cult might be a bit of a strong word, but I don't know any alternative. They're harmless, though. They hang out at the lake. They've never bothered me, but I'm more of a secular kind of girl. It's definitely something that you and that camera of yours should check out. I have to get back to my phone. I need to post a photo of the explosion so my friends know I'm okay, or that I exist. <laughs> okay, hold on. So this went from just some guy making fertilizer to now there's also a cult. Okay, wow. Anyway, this guy is wearing a hot dog costume. Hot dog? Yeah, hot dog. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> the plot thickens. Uh, cheers, you must be Cliff's new friend. Uh, yeah. Sweet. Cliff and I go way back. 
It's nice to see his streaming business growing. You know, I was his first follower. That explosion sure was something. At least a dozen of my soda bo bottles popped, and it was so difficult to get the soda back inside the bottles. Get the soda back inside the bottles? I'm sure there's some dirt in it now, but no problem. I just call it Artist and Doug's Crunchy Countryside Soda. Ew. <laughs> People call this town uneventful. First, that badger put off the main power line of the town, and then bang, just ten years later, ten years, <laughs> this huge explosion happens. I bet those cultists hanging by the lakeside have something to do with this. I don't trust them. They have super weird outfits. I can swear I heard a large explosion around the lake a couple weeks ago. It was a lot louder than this. I really hope you two can get to the bottom of this. Maybe after that hard work, you can enjoy some Artisan and Doug's crunchy countryside soda. Ooh, that's so hard to say. By the way, the cliff said his regards. Nice try, buddy. I know he did. I meant to hit yes, but they switched it up on me. That's fucked up. Um, the bond between a loyal wiener salesman and his best customer is unbreakable. Oh, brother. Alright. Oh? Oh? Go away. Can't you see I'm hiding? Um, explosion. I had no idea we were hauling explosives. Man, my summer holiday is sinking hard. Working around the clock is hard enough without things blowing up. Lucky for us, the roads here lack maintenance. Without that pothole, the barrel would have blown up inside the car. I have to get back to the retreat. If you want some more answers, you'll find them there, just like I did. Although I'm considering switching to a library, since they very rarely explode. Which reminds me that I have to do my calculations to get my exact measurements. May the millimeter protect me. That's that's all I can ask her about? Oh, okay. Hey, you know what? There's another dog over here. I wonder if I can get more subscribers by zooming on it. Maybe the dog isn't here anymore, but... Maybe I will... Go investigate. Oh? You must be new here too. Uh, yeah. We moved here a couple weeks ago. It's a nice place, but a bit... clickish, I'd say. Nah, you're just being an introvert, that's all. Well, not everyone wants to be the friendly neighborhood fairy like you, honey. Nice to meet you. I hope you enjoy Butterfly Valley as much as we do. Speak for yourself. This individual looks like a complete douchebag. <laughs> I know this child dressed as a fairy did not just call me a douchebag. Hey, first of all, friendly neighborhood fairy could be a bit more friendly. Secondly, we've talked about this. You can't start attacking a personal choice like that in an argument. Oh, not this ad hominem lecture again. I'll lecture you until you learn it. We use facts to win arguments, not insults, okay? So someone can be stupid, but I'm not allowed to say it out loud? Well, yes. You gotta find a flaw in their argument and focus on that. How on earth am I able to argue with someone who doesn't say anything? Wow, they called it out, huh? Well, then it's pretty clear that you don't have to defend yourself by being mean, right? I don't want to defend. I want to attack. This fairy is out for blood. Darn. Those remake cartoons of old fairy tales parenting, uh, make parenting hard. <laughs> oh my god. That was good. Look at him. He's just a little guy. Okay, I guess I should probably talk to Cliff. Here you are. Did you learn anything new? Uh. Girl Farm Cult. I've heard rumors about that cult. We should check that out. It sounds very newsworthy. But it will have to wait. We need to be somewhere. Mr. Wilson has a new dog, and animals are always news. Let's get a move on. We're gonna go report on a new dog instead of a cult? You look like, uh, you look like new here. Yeah, we should know. We're the recon force around here. A recon force? We're just a bunch of kids hanging around, doing nothing with our lives. Wow, that pre-puberty is hitting Jewel hard. Now that you're here, could you settle an argument for us? Yeah, that would actually be very helpful. Jewel here is accusing me for stealing one of her action figures. Search your memories, you know it's true. 
I don't care for your stupid toys. You lost it. It's been it's been like this for days. They just won't quit. It's gonna take our whole summer to resolve this. Fine, I give up. I lied. My mom took that action figure from me after I bit our dog, okay? Wait, what? I was just trying to manipulate you using your terrible memories to let you buy me a new one. <laughs> you bit your own dog? This is not cool. Yeah, you don't just gaslight your friends. Gaslight? That's a method where someone's memory, perception, or feelings are being questioned on false premises. Wow, that sounds awful. Well, manipulation usually is. Well, it's good that I found out about this before I'm old enough to go to social media. Can we finally put this behind us? I'd like to do something with my childhood. So what do you guys want to do then? I don't know, hang out at the treehouse and have arguments over little meaningless things, I guess. <laughs> it's good. I, <laughs> I'm having a good time, actually. Why is it? That's so suspicious. I just want to look and see if there's another dog. You know? I just... Okay. There was another dog, but it was, um... <gasps> Who's that? Breaking the owl. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good, actually. Breaking news. Hello there, Mr. Wilson. Uh, hello, Cliff. I didn't realize you'd be here so fast. Speed is our pride and joy. News must travel fast. Yes, I've, I've been trying to reach you, see? Dear viewers, we're in the heart of human interest stories, as Mr. Wilson has just acquired a new dog for himself. Please, tell me all about it. That's what I want to talk to you about. You see, I lost my glasses. Isn't it true that you found this poor animal in the woods when you were, when you were taking a walk? Yes, that's exactly what happened. But like I said, I didn't have my glasses. Wow, so you adopted the dog then and there? Well, he or she, I haven't had the courage to find out, was very forthcoming and seemed friendly, so I took the poor animal home. First thing I did was washing the creature, or rather, I tried to wash it. You see, I was getting more certain that it's not a... Mr. Wilson, you are truly a national treasure, a dog's best friend. Wait a minute, Cliff. The trouble started the moment I got home with the animal, because when I found my eyeglasses... Where are you keeping the dog? Our viewers would love to see the star of the story. Inside, right behind this very door. I'm outside for a good reason. Dear viewers, I don't know about you, but I'm dying to see the dog, Mr. Wilson. Oh, the dog. Mr. Wilson, let's see your new friend. By all means, <laughs> I wouldn't open that door if I were you. My, my, aren't you a big fellow? <laughs> Be careful, Cliff. I'm not sure if this is a good idea. Hey, don't show your teeth to me. I just wanted to give you belly rubs. Belly rubs? Oh, my. Wait a minute, you're not a dog. Not a dog? Darn. I was worried you'd say that. <laughs> it's a wolf. Thank you for confirming that. I was suspecting the very same thing. Why the heck did you contact us and not the police? I need someone to verify if it's a dog or a wolf. That's not a police matter. That's a job for a reporter. Well, thank you for your help. I'm so relieved to finally find that out. Relieved? You have a wild, angry wolf inside your house. That doesn't bother me at all. But it really scares me is the unknown. What? <laughs> Now that I know that the creature is a wolf, I can be at peace with the situation. Thank you, Cliff. And you're not afraid to go back in? Should we call the police? No, no, I'm not scared at all. I I think the wolf also needs some private time to process this latest information about him, or her, not being a dog. Better leave the creature to it. Right, well, <laughs> dear audience, what a powerful news story this is. It speaks to us all. When was the last time you checked your pet's authenticity? <laughs> <laughs> is there a wolf in dog's clothing living inside your house? <laughs> this is the crucial information and questions only local news and Cliff Rockside can bring to you. Remember to subscribe. Looks like we were saying are welcome. There can only be one alpha. <laughs> Just follow me. Keep streaming. I'll try to outrun the beast. But I'm so slow. Oh my god. Epic 
20 subscribers. Okay. Whew. Wow, we just fucking ran after. Uh, a wolf. <laughs> also, hi, Reese. Welcome in. I hope you're doing well. You came in at the, the weirdest time when we were reporting on a wolf. Uh oh, my headphones also turned off just now. Come on. Turn on. Sorry, I'm trying to adjust so I'm comfortable in my chair, but it's hard. <clears throat> <clears throat> Are you alright? Yeah, thanks to you. That was a real wolf. I know because it was alone, and wolves are always alone. Like Cliff Rockside, a lone brave wolf. Right. Anyways, Mr. Wilson called in a second ago, saying you were running for your dear life. He had found the animal from the woods and thought it was a dog. Yep, I was able to piece that together myself. Not that I don't love scoops, but I prefer not to be eaten by them. I don't think I've ever run that fast, and <laughs> that wolf has a stellar career as a personal trainer. Listen, I've been meaning to talk to you about what happened. Let's take a ride, shall we? Let's take a ride. Remember, it's not easy for me to trust you. This time it has to be strictly off the record. Of course, we always protect our sources. And we're not recording anything at the moment. Also, strictly off the stream? What? But that's our... I mean... Do I have to remind you about the badger-related trust issues? Badger-related? <laughs> Come on, Cliff. If you haven't changed... One bit, you might as well step out of the vehicle. No, no, you're right. Hey, backseat, shut the stream. You would have sought the vehicle before me getting out, right? Most likely, but I can still change my mind. Now listen, I'm pretty sure that something strange is going on. Explosions don't just happen around here. Agreed. The pumpkin, for example. Cliff, be serious. I am. The explosive barrel is being transported to Haas's farm. Well, Mrs. River Mrs. Riverbend got her manure from Haas, and the pumpkin grew gigantic overnight. That can't be a coincidence. Hmm, you might be right, but there's more. The moment I mentioned Haas and his farm, Tiger got upset and defensive. I wanted to go and see for myself what's happening there, but he insisted that we look for clues elsewhere. Interesting. Does Pecker have something to hide? I don't think so. He just gets on his heels every time he feels something traditional, like farming, is questioned in any way. Okay. <laughs> he thinks he has the case closed with Jeb behind bar. Uh, behind the bar. Okay. Do you think that Jeb could have orchestrated something like this? Orchestrated? Jeb Stetson? No way. That guy can't handle a pair of rhythm sticks. Cliff, I need to ask you a favor. Could you go to Haas's farm tomorrow and see if there's something we should be worried about? You could be my undercover news reporter. Me and Haas aren't exactly on good terms. I know this is a tall order, but it would be really helpful. Darn. Of course I'll help you. That's what we journalists do. If there's indeed something going on, I owe it to my subscribers to uncover it. Thanks, Cliff. I really appreciate this. Okay, I guess we, we're going to Haas's farm, right? What the heck is going on? What are you doing here? Hello, Melvin. How many times do I have to tell you that my name is Cliff? Cliff Rockside. Oh, right. Sorry. Of course. I can use your fake name, Melvin. What was it? Cliff... Side Melvin? <laughs> Side, Melvin? <laughs> if you're gonna roast somebody, could you do it for real? Don't tell me you came all the way way here for trying to... Hold on. Don't tell me you came all the way for trying to insult me with the kindergarten stuff. Uh, what's next? Are you gonna threaten me with a finger gun? No, no. I'm not here to insult you or threaten you. I just came to welcome you back. It's always nice to see one of my apprentices return. I left the Herald and Butterfly Valley because I'm not your incompetence. Oh, because of your incompetence as a journalist. I'm not your apprentice in any way. That might be true. No apprentice of mine would fail this miserably. Again, why are you here? Besides the fact that your job doesn't require any actual work, so you have plenty of time to just troll people. Wow. <laughs> Made up news channels, uh, find me you're 10. 10 years old. With an adult man? I'm worried about you. As I'm always worried about the well-being of people or, uh, the people of our community. Oh, yeah, right. Clarence Spud, the great philanthropist. Uh, like that one time you harassed that hip-hop kid out of Butterfly Valley. I didn't harass anyone. 
I told the community the truth about the gang wars reaping our beloved town. They always start with rap music. There was one kid, not a gang or two rivaling gangs. He didn't make rap music or do any gang stuff. He was a talented street dancer. <laughs> I've never been any gang wars about Butterfly Valley after we got rid of that troublemaker. Checkmate. Alright. So he's a little racist. I have to say, you really put effort into your stupidity. Tell you what, don't embarrass yourself any more with the streaming nonsense. Focus on the cat videos. They're so popular that you might even have a moderate success. And let your lying piece of toilet paper be the only news media in Butterfly Valley? No way. I've been running the local newspaper for decades. And that's where the, fo the folks have always read their news. We know everything happening here. Oh yeah? I bet you don't have a clue what's happened today. You mean the accident? We have an exclusive interview from the police. We also found several eyewitnesses who saw the whole thing. That's super, but we have a clue you don't have, and we're really going to get to the bottom of this. For me, it seems that you've all reached the bottom already. Laugh all you want, but it's going to be yesterday's news tomorrow. I've already covered the whole thing on my live stream. It's so great that at least 12 people wasting their life on computers saw that live on your channel. The people actually living here will trust the Valley Herald like they've always done. You'll soon learn this yourself. But if it is necessary for you to drag yourself across the mud, so be it. Okay. You don't have to be dragged along, kid. Uh, kid with the camera. You seem to have some real talent. If you want to put that talent in real use in a real news media, just call me. I hate that guy. Just hate him. Everything he does makes, mocks everything the journalism stands for. When I was working for him, he didn't even pay me. He ordered me to do this and that and was always promising that after a while he would pay me. Which is totally different from what we're doing here. You're already getting paid with all the experience you're getting. That's something you can't buy. It's like love. You can't buy that either. So what I'm giving to you is as valuable as love. That's pretty awesome, don't you think? <laughs> Besides, I got a clue that can bring us the big audience and bring us closer to earthly wealth as well. Uh, first thing in the winter, we're going to head out to Haas Weaverton's farm. We'll see what that maneuver stuff is all about. It's like we journalists always say, follow the smell, or was it follow the money? Anyways, we'll see you in the morning. Try to get some sleep, and thanks for the great job today. You really have what it takes. Wow. It's a, it's a wrap. Completed day one. Look at the, the glasses on him. That's, that's nuts. I love it. No explosion. Just a pothole. Hmm. Please confirm that a sound similar to an explosion was caused by the driver hitting pothole. Oh, I can't day read it. Two, a family affair. Ooh. I can't believe the gap I read in the Herald this morning. Clarence's exclusive report was nothing but falsehoods from top to bottom. He single-handedly decided that it was an accident and nothing weird is going on. That man calls himself a journalist. Can you believe that? Uh, no. That's what I'm talking about. No one who understands one bit about news media wouldn't call him a journalist. It's more propaganda than news. Everybody loves a stupid newspaper because he keeps on talking about how uniquely great Butterfly Valley is. We don't even get a proper coffee because he just keeps talking about how wonderfully European it is that we have a coffee shop. That coffee tastes awful. Every time. I bet that, it, I bet that if an actual French person would taste that, he would instantly put up a fight. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe not French. I think they'd surrender instantly. Just drink it and cry. But you get the point. Okay. <laughs> I, just, I need to calm my nerves. Clarence will get what's coming to him. We ha uh, we have to fight to keep the flame of journalism burning. Okay, we're almost there. I wonder what we'll find out. Those pumpkins and tomatoes on the right sure do look a lot bigger than usual, don't you think? Uh, can I look? Oh, yeah. Oh, those are some big-ass pumpkins. Ooh, look at the, the sunflowers are huge! Wait a minute. Mrs. Riverbed might have provided us with uh, an intriguing news story. That's exactly what my channel needs. Okay. Wow. Now, please tell me I can zoom in on the cows. Please tell me. Oh, I can't. Oh, that's fucked up. I want to zoom in on the cows and gain subscribers. Okay.
Wait, there's a horse. Look at the horse. Wait, what's over there? There's somebody over there. Okay. Look at how big those apples are. What the hell is going on? Hey, Fred. Hope you're doing well. Okay, we're here. Nobody's noticed us, so let's do a little bit of digging before we start asking questions. Dang, nabbit. I'd rather be anywhere else than here. Farms are the opposite of news media. News is about things happening, and there's never anything happening on a farm. Well, except for the gargantuan vegetables pushing from the ground. My dear audience, today, I, Cliff Rockside, have... Cliff Rockslide. <laughs> right at local news, uh, local Beaverton farm to find some answers. As all my loyal followers know, our beloved town was shaken by an unexpected explosion. Uh, some of you might ask, what are expe expected explosions then? But unfortunately, we don't have time for that uh, introspection right now. We're too busy trying to connect this peaceful looking farm to that explosion. Remember the driver causing the accident was delivering that barrel to this location? Let's start by checking out the fields uh, we drove past. If those are pumpkins, Haas could actually cure world hunger. Who would have thought? Dear viewers, we're about to enter the den of the dragon. We're keeping the stream uh, flowing, so remember to like, share, and especially smash that subscribe button. This is local news with Cliff Rockslide. <laughs> oh no, the Overwatch Battle Pass. I hope you get get it done. Breaking news. Wow, this is just incredible. Dear viewers, can you believe your eyes? These are apparently tomatoes, but they're the size of a beach ball. I haven't seen anything like this. Except for that almost uh, identical giant vegetable we reported yesterday. But after that, I haven't seen anything like this. Dear viewers, this is Cliff Rockslide. Cliff, Cliff Rockslide, live in Haas Beaverton's farm right here at Butterfly Valley. Uh, bringing you this amazing exclusive report. This could very well be a vegetable revolution. A tomato takeover. A new world onion this is national news baby those of you who are watching spread the word everybody needs to know in your face clarence spud i bet you don't have this kind of content try to make paper planes out of your newspaper maybe it'll actually reach someone bring you tomorrow's news today just look at these pumpkins this is riverbed didn't exaggerate one bit even that one, little one is huge if this doesn't make you feel small i don't know what does how about the owner of the farm telling you that you have two seconds to explain yourself before he'll make a haystack out of you? Um, hello, Haas. I got a hot tip about your farm. Ain't nothing newsworthy here, boy. Try to make that argument when you're not standing next to a pumpkin bigger than a car, and we'll see if it gets any more credible. We don't want any more attention around here. Things are already crazy enough. Oh, yeah? Care to elaborate? Since when did you get interested about the difficulties that this farm is having? Didn't seem to bother you one bit last time. Dad, please. Dad! I mean, Mr. Beaverton, sir, let's try to focus on the case here. Yes, exactly. And that case is taking care of the farm. Don't make it any harder by advertising my place to an even bigger bunch of weirdos. I have my hands full already. I'm so very sorry for giving some media space to your business. <clears throat> what an awful person would do that to his family. Uh, you're right. Sorry, Cliff. It's good to see you. Just try not to cause any more trouble for this farm, okay? Go say hi to Nan and Lila. They haven't seen you in ages. Sure thing, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> what? I was so shook by the dad part that I like didn't zoom in when I was supposed to. Oh my god. Dad! <gasps> Look at the cow. Look at it. <laughs> Family's the worst, huh? So yeah, Haas is my dad. We don't get along that well. He wanted me to continue his work on the farm, but let's just say that I had some opinions about whether a person should spend his whole life waiting for plants to grow. I don't want to get on his bad side. Let's keep a low profile. Dear audience, we will keep the stream going. I'm not going to let personal relationships obstruct me from finding the truth. Hmm. I should go catch up with Lila. Maybe she could s shed some light to this confusing vegetable situation. Okay. Well... Oh, hi, Melvin. Fancy seeing you here. Um, we're just here to see if there's something worth reporting. I see you have some nice vegetables. And please call me Cliff, okay? 
Oh, you'll always be Melvin for me, brother dearest. But speaking of the vegetables, nice is underplaying it a bit, don't you think? I reckon you've never seen anything like this. Actually, I saw an even bigger one in Mrs. Y Riverbend's yard. Did you eat her mushroom stew again? I told you to stay away from that stuff. <laughs> what? No. We made a story about about it for my news stream. She, th she said that she got the manure from Haas. There seems to be quite a demand for these. Yep. All these people came from uh, the big city to get their own. I guess word travels fast. Wow. I never thought vegetables would get people waiting in lines. Outside of the elections, that is. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Not just any vegetables. These are one of a kind. You can't get them anywhere else. I suppose you can't. Uh, care to share how you managed to grow them this big? Nice try, brother streamer. We're not going to spill our gigantic beans all over the internet. This is Beaverton's family secret. Come on, the public deserves to know. Well, you are family. But Haas has told us to keep quiet. I'm pretty sure it would be a different story if you'd work here, but you made your choice. You better talk to Haas, okay? I'd love to chat, but I have to take care of our customers. You won't believe the questions these city folk are asking. If I have to answer one more customer, I'm uh, asking me, are these vegetables 100% vegan? I'm going to lose it. Go say hi to Nan. I just left her coffee table. Uh, she'd love to see you. You think so? Is she still as bitter before? Still as bitter as before. Even worse. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. I can't zoom in on the... Oh, they just clipped into each other. I don't know if I like that. People don't like cows? Is that it? No farm dog? It's fucked up. Well, look at what the cat killed, maimed, ate, puked, ate again, puked again, and dragged straight to my doorstep. <laughs> Hi, Nan. Nice to see you, too. It's been ages since I've seen you. Everybody just forgets poor old Nan. Oh, come on. There are literally dozens of people on the farm. You're at, you're at a shouting distance to everybody, and you love to shout at people. That's not the same thing. I don't know these people. Shouting only feels like something when you shout uh, to someone you hate to love. Lila told me she just left your coffee table. That was hours ago. Hours? I can smell the coffee in her breath, unfortunately. It feels like hours. I'm an old woman. Why do you have to be so mean? You poor thing. You'll probably be the first person on earth to die of loneliness while surrounded by a thick crowd. It's not a laughing matter. Can't you see I'm suffering? Yes, I can. It brings me great joy. <laughs> oh my god. That's my boy. It's good to have you back. You always know how to make me smile. Good to see you too, Nan. So how are things around here? I'm waiting for my death, which is approaching every minute. I hope that you will at least visit my grave every once in a while. Could I get a quick update on things before you kick the bucket? Both your life and my interest in your life are fading quickly. <laughs> so let us not waste any time. <laughs> oh my god. See? That's why you should have stayed on the farm and listened to your old man. With a mouth like that, you can get rid of those trendy big city idiots in a few minutes. Haas is a sissy and so is everyone else. Except you and me. What's up with you? You still work for Clarence? That was years ago. I'm running my own news service now. That's the spirit. Where can I order your newspaper? Nah, it's not a newspaper. I'm running a streaming service. Oh, I never thought you'd be into rivers and boats, but it's good to get some fresh air. <laughs> I didn't know you could wear a suit on uh, in a job like that. It's not that kind of streaming. It's internet stuff. Of course it is. Not a single word today means what I met yesterday. It's one of the reasons why I'm so eagerly waiting to die. <laughs> oh my god. Cool. Anyways, <laughs> it means I'm having my own TV channel on the internet. TV on the internet? How does that work? Pretty much the same how TV works on TV. You watch it with your eyes and listen to it with your ears. <laughs> Have you made me recent stories of anyone dying? You really like to stick to a theme, don't you? No, I haven't. Although I just got a hint of what a uh, mean old geezer sitting on a porch of a farmhouse might bore a handsome streamer news, uh, news streamer to death. Oh, Melvin. It's so good to have you back. Always a pleasure. See you later. If I don't die before that... I really love that wrinkly bag of evil. But enough of the pleasantries. We have to take a look around. I'm going to get to the bottom of these giant vegetables. There has to be some kind of connection to the explosion yesterday. Let's poke Haas a bit and see what happens. Poke him? Oh, no. I don't think it's going to go well, Melvin. 
What on earth is keeping that bolt in place? I swear this is the last time I'm fixing this piece of junk for Bob. I see you're keeping yourself busy. No, I'm not. I am busy. Not that you know the difference. I wouldn't mind a hand. Sorry, Dad. I don't know anything about things with engines. I'm more of a people person. <laughs> That's a surprise to the century. Anywho, what's happening here? I'm pretty sure furnaces don't grow this big with just animal discharges. Like I said, Cliff, it's under your concern. Last thing I need is you nosing around with that camera of yours. I saw Jed the other day. He was on his way here, but was interrupted with a blast that nearly destroyed half the town. Any idea, any idea what he was hauling? Jed ain't exactly a brain surgeon. I don't know what he was up to, but that explosion has nothing to do with me or the farm. That's interesting. He specifically mentioned you and the farm. Look, Jed talks a lot of baloney. You know that. The situation was sorted with the police and nobody got hurt. Why don't you just let this slide? The news story of a century? Dad, this is serious. It ain't nothing more than an unfortunate blunder. The public deserves to know what happened. Sure, and they can read all about it in the uh, Valley Herald. The Valley Herald? You talked with Clarence? Like I said, this was an unfortunate accident which has nothing to do with my farm and that's all there is to it. That's what I told Clarence. I don't buy it. There has to be more than that. I've had it with you. You made it quite clear that you don't want anything to do with your family. So stick to it or I'll use a stick to make you scarecrow... Make a scarecrow out of you. Oh my god. You can't silence me. <laughs> you can't silence me. I'm gonna find out what's going on with or without your help. Fine. Make a fuss about nothing and waste your time. That's what you're good at. If only you'd use as much energy on finding a proper job instead of pestering people. The truth shall prevail. Mark my words. I bet that a scarecrow that never shuts up and just wanders about being annoying could be quite effective. Don't make me test that theory. Nice chat, Dad. This is getting us nowhere, and I'm not really interested in starting a bird scare business, so let me think what to do. <clears throat> I think it's time for you to spread your wings and try some flying. I'll keep us busy for a while. Make those minutes count with some investigative journalism. Special investigation. Special investigation. Let's go. Can I now zoom in on the cows? Is that... No. Damn it. Damn it. I thought that would work. It's fine. So there was some stuff over there, but there is a yellow arrow over there, which I'm... Wanting to go see, I think. Hmm. You look like someone who could use some extra visibility, am I right? What? You're not involved with law enforcement or anything. You're obligated by law to say if you are. No. Good, good. We can continue this little conversation of ours. I'm selling you these fine bot subscribers. Bigger audience would do wonders for your channel. Let's do some business, shall we? Uh, uh, bots? I don't know. Oh man, what do we do? Yes? That's what I'm talking about. You can have these subscribers for a very minimal cost. You see, I've lost something very valuable to me. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere around this farm. I was exploring the perimeter a few days ago, and I lost my pet penguin in the process. Chili McPenguin isn't exactly cut out to survive in this kind of environment, so I'd appreciate it if you could find him. Folks weren't jumping from joy when they figured out that Chili pretty much emptied the pond from fish. So my inquiries about whereabouts of my pet were first met with ridicule, and after the whole fish incident with blunt threats. Oh, brother. As I'm currently considered a persona non grata, could you give me a hint here? Uh, yeah. Thanks, I really appreciate this. Chili should be around here somewhere. Well, the fish ain't biting today, same as yesterday. It's strange. There used to be loads of fish in this little pond. What can I do for you? Um... Plants? They're pretty cool, aren't they? I have no idea what made them grow like that. I'm betting on aliens, or the government, or aliens that have infiltrated the government. Or all of them together! <laughs> that reminds me. I thought I saw aliens disguised as humans a few days ago when I was here fishing. There have been a lot of strange people hanging around Haas's farm during the past week or so. I'm not talking about only the city folk. People are carrying around this we these weird barrels with lights and all. I've never seen barrels like that. Except in video games, and in video game barrels like that explode. That's why I'm staying away from them. And my mom keeps telling me that you can't learn anything from video games and told me to spend the summer outside. Summer is no excuse to stop playing video games. Okay. Um... Hey nerd, the vegetable sand is in the opposite direction. This area is restricted. No exceptions. You got that? Uh, no. Do you even lift, bro? 
I do. I lift weights and nerds, and I'm all out of weights, so go ahead and make my day. If you want any tips on how to be as an outstanding alpha male as me, feel free to ask. Um, barrels. These old things here? Uh, Bessie, don't worry about those, okay? Um, and if you're wondering why I find it odd that there's fancy lights and old useless barrels, the answer is no, I don't, and no further questions. Tell you what, I think this little pop quiz is now over. You just take care of your own business, leave the farm in more capable hands. There's nothing to see here except my figure. Alright, let's get talking to this guy. Dubstep rules! Don't you just love it? Um, his name is Travis Ultrasound. Yeah. Awesome! I got these new Valco's noise cancelling headphones that are freaking awesome. I can totally focus on the music with no distractions. I wish I'd bought these sooner. The Fidelity is just awesome. Can I help you with something? Um. Cult? What? Speak up. Cult. I can't hear what you're saying. You're gonna speak louder. You wanna know about my aunt? How weird. What? Bye. You take care of yourself, okay? And trust the power of music. This helped me a lot. I was pretty anxious about guarding these barrels because I was told they might explode. But the plants need the stuff to grow. Dubstep. <laughs> I can't even talk because I'm like also about to laugh. Dubstep makes me think happy thoughts. You should try it too. I've lived my best life. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't. Do I have anything else I can do? I just gotta talk to Cliff again, huh? I thought I would find a penguin, but I guess I haven't found a penguin. Cheers, partner. Did you find out anything? Yeah, those got my attention too. Haas is in trouble with the high technology, uh, such as electric toothbrush, so they don't really fit the scene. In trouble. Okay. Anything else worth mentioning? Um. Missing animals. True, no cows at all, except for that really old one sitting on a porch. I heard that, you little rat. Love you too, Nan. <laughs> Darn, she has good hearing for her age. Anything else worth mentioning? Um, a block, you say? You must mean Danny Dumbo, that's his name. Well, his new nickname, previous was Brick. He's, how would I put it, he'd be a perfect chess opponent for Jeb Stetson. If there was someone to make sure that those two don't eat all the chess pieces... Where is he going? Where is he running to? Hi, sis. Now's the time to tell me what's going on here. Jeez, Melvin. There's nothing going on in here. I've had enough of this nonsense. You're selling vegetables the size of an elephant, and you think it's not suspicious? Come on, don't make a fuss about this. That's it. Cue the Breaking title. News. What the heck are you doing? This is Cliff Rockslide reporting from Hoss Beaverton's farm. There's a huge news story unfolding as people are lining up to buy one-of-a-kind vegetables. Uh, size of small vehicles. I'm here with one of the workers of the farm, Lila Beaverton. Care to, sh care to share your secret ingredients? Melvin, this is not funny. Don't try to confuse my audience by calling me with a fake name. Tell me the truth. Are you using some kind of special manure? Melvin, I already told you. I can't talk about it. Nonsense. The public deserves to know that you're putting what you're putting in your their food. This is not normal. These are just regular vegetables. They're a bit larger than usual, but other than that, there's nothing special about them. They're a bit larger, in the same sense that modern pop music is a bit shallow. This narrative is not believable. What narrative? You're imagining things and making something out of nothing. What on earth is going on here? What did I tell you about that camera? Sorry, Dad. I have a responsibility as a journalist to educate my viewers. To educate people, you'd have to have some knowledge about that stuff. You're just looking for a scandal to exploit. You take that back. I just want to get to the bottom of this. I'm concerned about the safety of the good folk of Butterfly Valley. Clarence Spud says the very same thing. And for some reason, he doesn't have to drive people crazy while keeping us safe. What? The only thing he's keeping safe is his own business. He just decided that the explosion at the gas station was an accident without any further investigation. That was just a freak accident. If you didn't listen to, if you don't listen to me, listen to your sister. There's nothing to worry about. If there's nothing to worry about, why is that second, second rate beef, piece of second rate beef called Danny Dumbbell blocking access to some parts of the farm? For Christ's sake, look. If you turn that camera off, I'll show you what's going on. I might consider it if you let me run a news story on whatever is happening here. 
Son of a biscuit eater. Fine, but only if you stop stirring any more drama. That's what I've been asking the whole time. I'm not making a reality show keeping up with the beaver tents. I'm a news reporter. Dear viewers, stay on the stream. We're about to uncover the biggest news event in history. Don't go anywhere. Okay. Epic reporting. Epic reporting. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Sweet Areno, I definitely smell a news report brewing. You just wait one gosh darn second. What do you think you're doing, Haas? I'm going to show him what we're doing here. Are you crazy? He's a reporter, and not a reporter like Clarence. He can do some actual harm to us. Do I have to remind you that in this place, I'm the boss, and you do what I say, Danny? So you're boss Beaverton now? I can still change my mind, Cliff. Sorry, Dad. You have to admit it was a bit funny, though. It meant nothing. Uh, people are going to find out about this sooner or later, Danny. No point in trying to hide it. I don't know about this Haas. He reeks trouble. He is trouble. But he's also my son trying to make a living with something semi-decent. Be gentle, okay? You're dealing with your family legacy, like it or not. I sure hope my family's legacy is built on something that can be revealed to the public audience. Fair enough. I'll give you a tour. Follow me. Wow, these vegetables are gigantic. I've never seen an onion in this enormous in my entire life. If Mrs. Riverbend's pumpkin was large, this beast dwarfed it in size. How is this even possible? Don't tell me that the secret ingredients are love and care, because the steroids are also about love and care. I understand your ambitions, Cliff, but I really don't want to reveal my secrets all over the internet. So why did you even bring me here if you ain't gonna tell me what's going on? And besides, with vegetables this big, you could cure world hunger. You'd be a hero. Sure, because people on the internet love individuals who want to do some good and treat them with respect. That's not how it's going to roll. More likely, I get tons of hate mail for being a virtue signaling tomato hugger. If someone uses my secret to build a bomb or a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> There's a very good reason why I stay away from computer stuff. That's because I don't want to start hating the world. What about sales, Dad? I could provide you with some help marketing. Uh, some help with marketing. Your vegetables are going to be an international success. If Hearsay has brought this many customers around, think about what would happen internationally or internationally with some proper advertising. Ugh. Are you are you about making news or making commercials? Come on, Cliff. Pick a thing. <laughs> you can't just say whatever gets you through. You have to really stick to your principles. Economic news are also news. Well, sometimes at least. News stories about small countryside business expanding to an international level are very popular nowadays. Let me stop you right there. Whoa. Let me stop you right there. We're, I'm, not interested in expanding. We've been a small business for generations. That's what we'll be in the future, too, despite the size of our products. Come on, now. You're being modest simply for the show. Uh, you, you need to think bigger. Much bigger. No, that's you, not me. You constantly think too big, and that's why you struggle with all the small things. I have very little interest in anything else than cultivating what naturally grows on the soil. Naturally? You call this natural? A plastic Christmas tree is more natural than these monsters. You can film those vegetables all you want, but I have zero intentions to reveal my methods to someone, uh, to that howling abyss called the internet. But, that's the end of it. I have to attend to my chores, so show yourself out once you're done. What a sourpuss. It's hard to believe that we're related. If I'd have a su successful business, I'd share my success with my close ones. I mean, of course, I have a successful business, and I'm already sharing my success with you. Did you have to walk here, or did I give you a ride with my car? Exactly. I do share. That's why we have the advantage, and that's why we're going to figure out what's happening here. Let's nose around a bit, shall we? Okay. Oh my god, he's really running, too. What's going on here? Hey. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Look at these pumpkins. Good lord. 
we just, um, I guess now we can just talk to, talk to Cliff and see what's going on with this giant ass carrot. Breaking news. Just what I thought, I've already seen everything. A carrot the size of a spacecraft. I bet living inside that gigantic onion would still make people cry less than paying current rental prices. Dear viewers, this is Local News with Cliff Rockslide, and we're bringing you this developing story with larger than life vegetables. I mean, just look at that carrot, whoa. <laughs> I forgot my DPI was still really big, uh, really high. <laughs> Have you seen anything like that before? I sure haven't. There's no need for panic. As far as we know, these vegetables do not threaten the public safety in any way. Unless they run for Congress. <laughs> they need to do that joke again. To our knowledge, there's no supernatural elements present. It was full moon last night. There were no were turnips reported running around. Having said that, we'll continue our rigorous efforts on uncovering this mystery. In the meantime, would you just feast your eyes on this magnificent ocean of never before seen footage of rocks? Rootstocks fit for kinks? If I speculate, which we journalists never do, I say these kind of results are not achieved naturally. We've already got hints about this mystical manure playing some part in this process. And that very same fertilizer might have been behind yesterday's explosive news story. It all boils down to what is this mystery manure, where does it come from, and how does it affect these carrots, onions, pumpkins, and whatnot. We'll get to the bottom of this. Cliff Rockslide doesn't sleep until our truth has been revealed, and neither should you. Unless you're like a jet pilot or a surgeon, then you definitely should sleep. It's really dangerous to practice those professions tired. This is local news with Cliff Rockslide, bringing you the latest news from Butterfly Valley. Wow. Epic reporting. Epic reporting. <laughs> uh oh, okay. We're looking at the cultists. We are. We're looking at them. All right. What the heck is going on there? They seem to be a bit out of place, don't you think? Uh-oh. He's gonna go talk to him. Hey, I need... Okay, hold on. If we're doing this, I just need you to, like, not do that. Thank you. Okay, you can't interrupt me because I'm doing something. Lay down. Hello there. Lovely day for a little dance, I see. Greetings to you as well. It is always a good day for a dance. Today in particular. May I ask why? You may, but I may not answer. The one by one by one has blessed us again. The one by one by one? Our beloved deity are being in perfect harmony. These must be the cultists. A perfect deity in harmony? That's super interesting and not alienating at all. My name is Cliff Rockslide, and I'm the most popular news streamer on here. We don't speak to journalists. Our past experiences with the media have not been encouraging. Don't you worry. I always treat my interviewees correctly. Do you have any idea as to why the vegetables around here need warning lights for their air traffic? Nope. I just hope the farmer can counts his blessings. One by one by one has been good to him. Tell me more about this one by one by one. <laughs> he or she sounds interesting. One by one by one defies definitions. A being with perfect dimensions sent here to save us all. According to your geometrical, geometrical praise, geometrical? Why is it so hard for me to say? Your camp must work by the principle, be there and be square. Nice try, but we don't participate in journalism or comedy. I see you're hauling pretty in interesting looking barrels. What's in them? And those old things? Nothing you'd find interesting, I'm sure. I've never seen barrels like those before. They're interesting on the outside, so surely their contents are interesting too. Not at all. It's like food packaging. Very nice and tempting on the outside. Revolting rubbish on the inside. Same story here. Revolting rubbish? <laughs> so you're storing your garbage inside decorated barrels? Like any normal person would do in their most normal lives? I don't like the direction this conversation is taking. It's starting to feel like an interrogation. Interrogation? No, no. I'm just a people person who likes to chat. <laughs> we don't like snoopers. Like I said, these barrels and what's in them is none of your concern. Let me make a guess. These barrels these barrels are filled with manure? Manure? How dare you? These holy vessels contain the very essence of the almighty one by one by one. So it's not manure then. It is most certainly not. Renounce your blasphemous ways. I take it from your reaction that they're not full of garbage either, unlike all your previous statements before this very moment. Calling the most precious substance known in the 
universe manure is desecration. And for that I curse you. By the holy metric, you shall never witness the perfect dimensions of the one by one by one. Holy of the holiest. Wow, and I thought arguing with my dad on livestream was the most awkward thing happening today. Aren't you overreacting a bit? Overreacting? I should strike you down with the power of the cube right now. The cube! But one by one by one teaches us to be patient and forgiving. Not to be rude, but you've been graduating from that university for a while. Metric day is coming. It's coming to all you non-believers, routers, globers, and two-dimensionists everywhere. Jeez, calm down. I will do no such thing. A line has been crossed. <laughs> I think we're done here. Let the wrath of one by one by one be upon you for the rest of your days. I'd normally tell you to take it easy and eat your vegetables, but that might actually be part of the problem here. Air resistance is futile. <laughs> take care, okay? I knew that old farm might have changed a bit while I was gone. This is a bit over the top. Those cultists give me some serious creeps. Why are they here on the farm? What is Haas thinking? Who trusts people who dress up like their beds? Like their beds? Also, what's up with those barrels? Why is Danny Dumbbell here? Time to confront Haas one once more. I want answers. I don't think bothering your dad is going to make him tell you what's going on. I, I have to say that, Cliff. I really do. <laughs> so it seems our test group is eagerly buying those vegetables good good well that is all it's well we still have a problem Haas what do you mean I was browsing the internet at my mansion minding my own business when suddenly I saw a bunch of large vegetables on a video stream do you happen to know anything about that because it was identical to these vegetables. And I remember being quite specific that we keep those products out of the news for a while. So I'm quite confused. Could you clear my mind a bit, Haas? Ah, I knew it. You follow my stream. Be quiet, Cliff. My business, <laughs> my businesses are none of your business. Look, I understand your concerns, Clarence, but I can't really hide vegetables this big. I mean, I tried, but they don't fit the barn door. So you're selling giant vegetables that can't be shown anywhere? Well, at least you have quite a bit... Uh, you have a quite unique business model. There we go. What's your marketing plan here? Just spreading these monsters all over the state and waiting for people to accidentally bump into them? I told you it was trouble. Are you streaming this? Cliff, cut it. I mean it. Now. But Dad, do it for me. Just this once. Is it too much to ask? Uh, no, it's not. Just this once. Shut it down. Thank you. Danny gave me a call, and I knew instantly what was going on. May I remind you that our, of our business arrangement? There are certain obligations you must fill. Business arrangement. You're not only doing business with Clarence, you are going to expand? And you lied to me earlier? Why? Knock it off. Can't you see you've done enough damage already? What the hell? I don't tolerate any more hiccups, okay? Uh, this worthless son of yours is not going to ruin my retirement plans. You better not talk about him like that. I'll do whatever I please. Don't forget who's in charge here. It was you who desperately... Who was desperate... Ooh, it was you who was desperately looking for someone to finance your farm, not me. <clears throat> You're still on that very thin line, Haas. I can destroy your business in five minutes if I want to. You got that? Yes. I didn't hear you. Yes. Good. And I'll get rid of this nuisance. Why don't you let him talk to you like that? Because I'm out of options. If only you were here to help me, I... Dad, um, just get in your car and go home. Wow. You heard the man. I think we're done for the day. It's okay. Day, day two. I might do one more day and call it. Haas brings in the big guns. Clarence Spud. All you need is love, water, and sunshine. The humble farmer states. Bull. Baloney. Day three. Eat your veggies. Cock soccer. <laughs> that threw me off guard. Morning. Our local newspaper just keeps on giving. Giving people false impressions, that is. Haas and Clarence were almost at their throats, but the article frames them as best friends. Why? I can't make heads or tails of this. Instead of answers, we got a truckload of new questions. We just gotta keep digging. Something will eventually pop up. What's with you? Or what's up with you? Enjoying the hectic life of local news? Uh, yeah. Well, of course you do. 
exciting days, great boss, lots of experience. What's not to like? Apart from almost getting blown to pieces, almost getting eaten by a wolf, and spending an afternoon watching my family, well, being my family, today we're going to do things a bit different. One of the most important tools for a journalist is a nose for news. It's basically our spider sense, which directs us towards interesting and newsworthy stories. It's the thing that makes us journalists tick. <laughs> You've already practiced a bit, but today we're going to make your nose the head nose. Well, all the noses are head noses for pretty obvious reasons, but you get the idea. I've marked three locations with arrows. You can see the right directions on that nifty compass of yours by holding down either L or R button, or with the right mouse button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing what modern technology can do. You got the wheel. Let's get going. Melvin. Oh, heck. Yes, what is it, my dear lady? My dear lady. Melvin, you're not a little boy anymore. I think it's time for you to get over being embarrassed in your mother's company. Hello there, kid. I bet there's a nice person behind that camera. You must be nice to put up with Melvin's nonsense. Now that you've had your mommy moment, could you at least call me Cliff? Sure, hun. It just slipped my mind. You were my little Melvin the Moms Muffin Monkey for so long that I just forget. Actually, you can call me Melvin all you want if you never mention that nickname again. What's the hassle? Your sister has something to tell you. Then she'll take me shopping. Hello again, brother. Great to see you. Everything good? Well, no. Jeb is still at the police station, and Dad's trying to get him free. Oh my, what did he do? Ran into some pothole with his van, almost caused an accident, or something along those lines. Let me guess, you got that information from the Herald? Yes, where else? Did those giant vegetables cause short-term memory loss? I interviewed you I interviewed you on my news stream yesterday. We covered the whole story about the explosion live on my channel. If you'd watch that, you'd really you know what really happened. What do you mean? There was a massive explosion at the scene caused by a manure barrel Jeb was delivering to your farm. Cliff, we've talked about this. You shouldn't believe her you shouldn't believe everything you see on the internet. I was there, Mom. I saw the whole thing with my own eyes. If that was the case, there'd be something on the Herald, right? So you think I'm lying then? I didn't say that, but you do have a vivid imagination. It's right there, video evidence. Remember, you were the one putting worms on your teacher's desk while trying to prove that it, he was a lizard man from space hiding inside a human body. First of all, even though my resources weren't the most reliable ones, trying to lure a predator with bait is pretty logical thinking for a nine-year-old. And for a second, does every family encounter have to end with some embarrassing revelation about me? Well, at least we aren't running the stream this time. Or are we? We are, aren't we? Jeez. Why would, I, why would Harold not write about it correctly? That seems to be big news. Because that explosion happened to your worker, and Clarence is doing business with you. He just wants to keep all the bad stuff away from the public to cover his back. He's cl clearly playing something big and bad, uh, and bad publicity could ruin that. I'll get to the bottom of this. Mark my words. I'm sure you do, Sugarpuff. Could we put this aside for a while? It's not the reason why I wanted to see you. It's not the reason I wanted to see you. Oh, shit. Okay, wait. Now, now I'm tabbed in. Good lord. All right. I found this weird book on the farm. I bet it belongs to those, well, lakeside people. If it quacks how great the vaguely defined deity is, you, you could probably call it a cultist. Uh, what kind of book? It's hard to describe. It was full of weird units of measure and geom geometrical formulas. I couldn't make much of it, really. That sounds definitely interesting. Can I see the book? No, I called it first. What? <laughs> I haven't read a good book for ages. The local library is just awful. According to Lila's description, it pro it's probably not that close to ro uh, those romance books you like to read. I bet you don't understand what you're reading. Well, maybe it gets better later. Some books are really technical before the story kicks in. Um, it's not, uh, never mind. Just let me take a look at the book when you're done. <laughs> sure thing, Cliff. Now I'll catch up with Lila some more before we hit the town. See you later. You too, Mom. Thanks for the tip, Lila. Now let's get reporting. Um... Well, so I am the main attraction for today. And we'll we'll see what's going on here. Greetings. Might I interest you in today's paper? Uh, yeah. Great. You seem like a person who has a genuine interest in news. Proper news. Not like those fake ones you read on the internet. I like Clarence's style. He makes the readers connect the dots for themselves. There's an actual word for that. You know, making their own conclusions. I would have said lies. <laughs> At first, it seemed a bit troublesome. My investigations have led me to all kinds of new truths. 
Did you know that this country is run by fish people? Lizards? That's not even the craziest part. These creatures come from space. Or was it from the center of the earth? But that's not important. For some reason, nobody's talking about this. Not even Clarence now that I think about it. What if he's also a part of this conspiracy? There's this one guy called HP Minecraft or something. Who's after these fish people, but he vanished like a hundred years ago. I have to investigate this further. The truth is out there. You just have to look for it. Yourself. And pick the theory that best fits your needs. And this, my dear audience, is fine for a kid playing around, but not for actual journalism. I'm glad I can think for myself and make my own conclusions. <laughs> Okay, we could go to the police station. Um, you know what? That seems like a logical first stop, right? That seems like a, a place that we would go. So maybe we'll go to the police station. That's fine. Hmm. Cheers, Cliff. Is there some kind of... Is there some kind of... Oh my gosh. Hold on. Let me try that again. <clears throat> Cheers, Cliff. Is there some kind of Beaverton family meeting going on? No. Because if there were, I'd be about 5,000 miles away from here. What's going on? Haas is pleading to Pecker for Jeb. Uh, the poor guy is still behind bars. How did it go yesterday? Were you able to shine some light on the recent events? Yes and no. The whole debacle just keeps feeding me new questions. Interesting. Want to share your findings? Well, long story short, Clarence has his nasty claws in this. Him and Haas have some, some sort of business arrangement regarding the big vegetables. That's interesting. What else did you learn? I don't, feel con I don't feel comfortable discussing it here. Too many pairs of ears, you know. Understood. Unless you're crazy to suggest this after all that badger stuff. But let's catch up later today at the coffee shop. Might as well sit next to an open sewage to open sewage and drink from that, but sure, let's meet there. Oh, Melvin, have you found yourself a girlfriend? And she's a police officer? Great, now there's someone to protect your sorry little butt. Ricks, I want you to meet my nan, Abby Beaverton. Nice to meet you, officer. Do you know how to change diapers? Um, we're not dating and we're definitely not going to start a family. Who said anything about a family? It's Melvin who needs changing. I'll leave Ricks out of this. She's right, we're not dating. What a shame. I was really hoping to attend a big wedding. This seems like the only big party left for poor nan is my own funeral. All right, you weren't constantly dying for a few minutes. What a lovely few minutes those were. Thank you, Nan, for making sure that I stay professional and don't fall for workplace romances. I mean, after this little demonstration, Rick's... Rick's knows to stay away from even a little possibility of coming par to part... Ooh. For coming part... For becoming part of the circus called Beaverton Family? Okay, they gotta fix that. That tripped me up really bad. How come? We're a hilarious bunch. You sure are, Nan Beaverton. It was very nice meeting you. You too, dear. I'm just so worried about the situation. How fair is it that Jeb is going to die in prison before I get to die? I'm going to die in here? <laughs> of course not. Well, how I envy you, Jeb. It must be great to know that in just a matter of days, you'll be touching the sweet spheres of eternal rest. Help, I'm dying here. Nobody's going to die today. Cliff, could you please hurry things up with Haas? He's at the Packers office. Sweet as your nan is, she's way too scary to be amongst us bad criminals. Oh, brother. Sure thing, Rex. We'll get right to it. Okay. How long are you going to keep him locked up in there? I told you exactly one minute ago that I don't know. That it hasn't changed during that minute. How do you do, gentlemen? Mind if I pop in? Yes, I do mind. This room is off limits for the pests like you. Hello, Cliff. This is quite rare for me to say, but you seem busy. Hard as it might be for you to believe, I'm actually working as a journalist and gathering information. Not just talking to a camera. Well, it is hard for me to believe. But you're clearly putting an effort on whatever you're doing. And at least this time it's not you who's causing the harm to our farm. Investigations like this take time. You can always file a complaint if you want. But those complaints take months to process. What a striking coincidence. <laughs> Speaking of investigations, what exactly are you currently investigating? The Herald said this was a pothole accident, but we both know about the explosion. I'm sorry, but does it say the Valley Herald, Herald customer feedback on my door? No? That's what I thought. But you were there! You were right next to me with that barrel exploded! What are you talking about? Jeb did run into a pothole, but the reason he's locked up is that the truck was carrying a barrel that exploded. And I bet that it was a, a similar barrel to what you're storing at your farm. Is this true, Pecker? Like I told you many times before, I'm not commenting anything about this current investigation. 
You leave me no options. It's news time. Breaking news. Breaking news. Let's roll. <laughs> this is Cliff Rockslide, reporting live from the police station in Butterfly Valley. There's an innocent man behind bars. Sergeant Pecker, a comment, please. You shut that stream down this second, or I'll have you arrested. Not this again. Do it, son. Now. Dad, you're not stopping me from being me. This is what I do. You moron. I'm trying to keep you out of jail. This is my last warning. Cliff, please. If this is really about news and not about you, how is getting behind bars going to help again? Uh, going to help. You can't make your stream from jail. Think, Cliff. Do you really want to spend the next week with only Jeb Stetson to talk to? Excellent point, Dad. Although my subscribers would skyrocket if I'd be thrown in jail, this isn't about me. Epic reporting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll continue without the camera, then. There's no stopping journalism. So again, how come the explos explosion vanished into thin air from the Herald's news story? And yes, I know that all explosions vanish into thin air, but you know what I mean. Wasn't it you who gave the statement about the incident to Clarence? It's none of your business. Can't you just let Jeb go? I'm sure he has learned his lesson. Well, I'm not sure he's capable of learning much of anything, but he didn't mean any harm, and I need him back at the farm. He's a suspect. Do I have to remind you about that? If he's a suspect, there needs to be a crime. I thought we were talking about an accident. What are his charges? Reckless driving, for example. That causes accidents and gets people hurt. Just like reckless streaming, for example. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it a bit unusual to lock up a person with these kinds of charges? I'm not going to go through the ins and outs of our legal system with you. I have the right to keep him arrested. So, so this is how justice is served in Butterfly Valley? Better warn the tourists not to hit any potholes while they're in town. Annoying as he is, he has a solid point. You don't throw people in jail for these kinds of offenses. So a father and son team consisting of a worn out farmer and an unemployed video weirdo are telling me how to do my job? And then they say the police resort to violence too easily? You ain't really making a shine for your profession at the moment. This ain't over. Something's not right here. I'll make this clear. At this moment, there's one person connected to Beaverton Farm in our jail. Next time you even try to step into my office, there's going to be three people connected to Beaverton Farm in our jail. You got that? Come on, Cliff. You heard him. He's not going to listen to reason. You must admit that there's something pretty strange going on. It's connected to your farm in several ways. Sorry, son. I don't have the energy or time for this. I have to get Nan back to the farm before she depresses some poor police officer to death. Also, there's a ton of work to do at the farm, and a ton counts just one of the vegetables. I really could use a hand there, but I understand that this is probably not the best time for you. Hearing your voices means that you're still in the jail pudding distance. If I were you, I'd correct that pretty quickly. <laughs> okay, okay, we're going. Sheesh. <laughs> Alright, well, that's not ideal. I forgot that he was following me. Um... Looks like there's two things on our map. We could go this way. Let's go see what's out this way. I have no words. <laughs> oh man, this does not look good. Goodness gracious, Cliff. Look what happened to my pumpkin. Yes, it seems that this one this is one ambitious pumpkin who's not gonna settle down on a farm league. Could you help me with this crowd? Not that I mind weird people dancing, it was all we did back in the sixties. But this music is just too awful. This is pure Ono without a hint of Lennon, and that's too much. Please, give us a hand. I tried to hose them, but I just gave them more energy. Oh, hi, Mr. Wilson. How's everything? Just great. I finally managed to lure the wolf back inside. You did what? I think I got him, or her, convinced that he just needs some introspection to adapt better to the new environment. I think this calls for an intervention, not introspection. Have you tried calling anonymous anthropomorphics? Anthrop anthropomorphics. Oops. What are we going to do? I don't like where things are going here. I've been advocating for peace for decades, but that might just change today if they don't stop. I'll try to talk to them. Not that it made any difference last time. Hmm. 
Maybe we could scare them away with some reporting, eh? Excuse me, dear people of Bedsheet Kingdom. What are you doing here? You. The metric house does not explain itself. Especially to heretics. <clears throat> okay, so then I rely on my own research. Which just concluded that you're harassing my most reliable news source. And you should stop. The one by one by one does not choose the individuals worthy of blessing. We are here to just celebrate the good fortune of those who are touched by a being of perfect dimensions. You might see me touched by a pair of hand handcuffs. Oh, I can't talk today. You're invading Mrs. Riverbend's privacy here. You puny little thing. It's our civil right to demonstrate, and we're not on her private property. Breaking news. Well, then leave me no choice but to use other civil rights uh, called Freedom of Press. This is Cliff Rockslide with local news. The vegetable invasion of Butterfly Valley is developing. What was two days ago, just a giant pumpkin has now sprouted out of control. This behemoth has completely occupied Mrs. Riverbend's garden. Mrs. Riverbend, please give our viewers thoughts, uh, your thoughts about this invasion. I woke up to the sound of cracking early this morning and saw the pumpkin taking down the fences on my property. I thought the pumpkin had reached its limits, but I was mistaken. My house is going to be next, and when I called the insurance company, they just laughed at me. They said it was their second craziest phone call this week, right after an old man asking if his wolf... If a wolf needs... Home insurance. I see. This is quite something, my dear viewers. Is there any limit for this beast? Will the Earth be orbiting this pumpkin in just a few years? We just don't know. <laughs> You're accompanied by Mr. Wilson, who you viewers might remember from his limited capacity, uh, capability of recognizing dogs. We'd love to hear your thoughts about this pumpkin. Well, I'm definitely concerned. I don't know how we can get rid of the darn thing. You can't just eat your way through it. Agreed. I, for one, would not consume anything that grows to these proportions. The manure must contain unknown compounds which need to be studied first. Who dares to mention manure? Oh, I almost forgot. Members of the Metric House, our fresh vegetable worshiping cult of the Butterfly Valley, have come to dance on the scene. Do you want to comment on the situation? Or are you too busy being suspicious and annoying? <laughs> You're asking for trouble. Can't you see how blessed these people are? They can finally feed themselves with proper nutrition. You just get your bellies full and stop complaining. Yes, yes, but what about the manure? Stop pushing me. I've told you to renounce your blasphemous ways. You don't know what we can do. Sorry, you're right. Uh, you're amazing. I should be thankful for your presence. Actually, I'll give you a new name that better reflects my appreciation for you. From now on, I'll call you people of Man, You Are Excellent. Which handily abbreviates to Man, You Are Excellent. Or even M-A-N-U-R-E. Enough! We've had with your profanity and ignoring the benevolence of the one by one by one. This place is not worth our blessing presences. <laughs> I I can't even <laughs> the way they just shorten it to manure. Maybe <laughs> my name is <laughs> my name is Cliff Rockslide, and you're watching the local news. Cliff Rockslide, you are officially damned by the Metric House for the rest of eternity. My dear viewers, are there any other news reporters willing to get damned to bring you the latest and greatest updates? And not just any irregular random damnation, but an official one. I, I don't know if I have to fill in some forms to confirm it, but I'm super terrified already. Only Cliff Rockslide is willing to go this far to satisfy his viewers. So hit that subscribe button and catch us later while we continue to solve this pumpkin palooza. Do not listen to this heretic. Join us and one by one by one day after tomorrow. Then you'll see the truth shall be revealed. I think it's a wrap. I'm going to smash that subscribe button so you stay up to speed in this vegetable folly which is about to spiral out of control. Thank you, Mr. Riverbend, for sharing your thoughts on this developing story. And my sincerest condolences for having to put up with these nuisances. Oh, thank you, Cliff. I just wanted to take care of my regular vegetables in peace. After sneaking into your garden as a teenager, eating one, and spending the next two days flying around the Andromeda, Andromeda Galaxy, I don't think that the word regular is the best one to describe your plants, Mrs. Riverbend. But you do you. I'm not in a hurry to get back home. I can give you a hand, Mrs. Riverbend. Good idea, Mr. Wilson. Better use your hands while you still have them. That sounded so threatening. Epic reporting. That sounded so threatening. <laughs> the way that she's just like dead staring now. Whoa. Whoa, I can walk through them. Can I get on the bus? No.
Hey, why did you report on that grandma's yard again? Why don't you make a news story about my tomatoes? You're getting coverage as you speak. It's about time. I've waited for my shot at the spotlight for far too long. Feast your eyes on these tomatoes. Aren't they cool? Uh, yeah. I should be making headlines all over the world. Well, at least this random lady is making some sort of social media post about them. Who, me? Who else? Oh, I was just looking for something rad for my selfie background. My followers don't care about vegetables. The whole town is against me. Don't take it personally. I just know <laughs> at least a million things more interesting than your tomatoes. What are you doing here, then? I noticed your pool and decided to take advantage of you. But then I noticed it was being used as a roofless greenhouse. I'm still processing my disappointment. That's all. This doesn't make any sense. I thought I'd be on my way to becoming a millionaire by now. With what? Tomatoes? Yes, with these giant tomatoes. Look, you can't just reason your way into success. While you might have something going on in here, doesn't that doesn't necessarily lead into anything. I'm not sure I follow. You're suffering from a fallacy of circular reasoning. A what? It's a fallacy where thing A happens because of B, and B happens because of A. You think growing vegetables will guarantee success because some successes are based on growing vegetables. I think I get it. What should I do then? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know anything about vegetables. Okay, thanks for this. We'll be on our way. Thank you. I didn't want to talk about that anymore. <laughs> um. Okay, where's the last thing we do today? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> What's going on here? More importantly, what the heck is Clarence doing here? What's the hold up? I need to get my products inside. You're not going to do that. This is my shop. Yours? Not anymore. And you know that. I pay good money for this garbage pile you call a shop. Our target group test yesterday at the farm was a success, so now we continue as planned. That means putting up a proper storefront for our vegetables. And that means your shop. We agreed that nothing would change. You promised it would be business as usual. Your business as usual means getting towards bankruptcy on a daily basis. I can't let my investment fail, so we need to spice things up a bit. This is a hardware store, not a soup. It doesn't need spices or more vegetables. And I happen to like it this way. I don't care what you like or don't like. I like business that makes money. And that's the only relevant thing here. We'll see about that. Me and Hans are ready and willing to keep these carrots out of yours outside the store. Even if it's the last thing we'll do. Last thing. Bob, I love you and everything, but I'm not going to be a martyr for a hardware store. Maybe for a very decent pizzeria, but not for a hardware store. Finally, a sound of reason. Uh, you should listen to your employees. This is my shop. It's for selling hardware and providing security services. Not for your vintage mutant hero, mutant zero turnips. Vintage mutant zero turnips. <laughs> Weird. The super catchy TV theme for the 90s cartoon just started playing in my head. Suit yourself. I can call help from the police uh, station, but I'd rather take care of this in a civilized manner. This seems like good content for my channel. Care to elaborate what's going on? Oh, it's just our, it's our eager journalism hobbyist. How is the amateur hour going this time? Cliff, he's taking, he's making a hostile takeover. Breaking news. That's all the magic news words I needed. Dear viewers, this is Cliff Rockslide bringing you this troublesome story of a hostile takeover. It seems that hardware Bob's shop is literally being overrun. You turn that stupid camera of yours off right this instant. Why? Is there something you don't want people to see? It can't be your atrocious tie, because you clearly want people to see that for some reason. Uh, who cares? No one's watching your pathetic stream anyways. At least now there's one actual journalist in the frame. He's violating our contract. He said I could keep this place as I intended, but now he's forcing me to sell those freak vegetables. Tell me, Clarence, why are you constantly connected to giant veggies? I thought that you were running a newspaper. Nice try, stream boy. That's called a trade secret. I'm not obliged to tell you anything. I was in a bit of a tough place a while back, and Clarence here offered to help me by buying my business. He promised I could continue my hardware store and security service as usual, but now he's forcing me to sell these carrots. Well, I understand him. You do? 
Why? Well, Clarence's news requires printed paper. He could as well use carrier pigeons or smoke signals. No wonder he's desperate. Listen, I'm not going to stand here and watch you make a ham-fisted botchery of a news broadcast. I'm a serious businessman, and I have bit better things to do. You're a serious pain to tell <laughs> to all well-meaning citizens of Butterfly Valley. That's pretty much of it. I'm the pillar of this community. You better shut up and respect the, this man. Why? Oh. You just keep that smiling redneck mouth ears shut and let the grown-ups do the talking. Danny, let me take care of this, okay? Just give me the word, boss, and I'll let my manhood teach you a thing or two. Secrets. Hostile takeover and a goon threatening a journalist? I wonder if the police has uh, something to say about your ways of handling business. I have no trouble with the law, and everyone knows that. No wonder since you pay them not to uh, cause you any trouble. Can you confirm that? Do you have proof? Well, of course he doesn't. Oh, Melvin, how little you've learned. Can't you just see that he's throwing in every lie you can come up with? I'm truly disappointed in you, Bob. You'll have the shop empty by tomorrow morning. And if you act very nicely and don't spare your knees apologizing, I might keep you as a shopkeeper. If you continue to annoy me, I'll find someone else to sell these products. You can choose between your principles and employment. Bend my knee for you? Not a million years. This is my shop, and I'll never sell your goods. Very well. Since I'm a patient man, I'll have mercy on you. C clearly, I dragged you into a business that's too big for your own good. I should have known better than to trust a hardware store guy with something as complicated as vegetables. That's low, even for you, Clarence. Bob is one of the pillars of the local community. Him? A pillar? What about me? You're more like a toilet that really needs the shadow of that pillar, or it starts to smell in the sun. I... Oh, and that toilet seems to be clogged at the moment, I might add. I'm just simply astonished by the lack of sophistication that you're expressing at this very moment. I've always known that you're a good for nothing, but now I'm starting to see that your overwhelming incompetence poses a serious threat to our community. Let's get going, Danny. When I get back, you better have those vegetables inside your store. Threat to our community? Huh. Do you know what that means, dear viewers? It means that he'll soon start a smearing campaign in his pretty little pamphlet called the Valley Herald. Good luck trying, Clarence. How can you make an awesome guy like me look bad? Yeah, I bet it's super hard to make a guy working from his garage and sticking his nose in everyone's business to look bad. Hey, are you being sarcastic? No, no, I really appreciate your down-to-earth signal. Or, er, down-to-earth style. Where did I get signal from? Real authentic stuff. It's obviously you really care for the truth and the well-being of the local people. Because it takes so much of your time that you obviously don't have time to take care of yourself. <laughs> I mean, I can sell your dedication even this far away. Gee, thanks, I guess. <laughs> You're welcome. I think you can make a real difference here. It's good to have someone around that doesn't think that serving the community and putting myself first are the same thing. That's true. We are not about the money. This, this kid doesn't even want to get paid for doing all the camera work. You don't pay your assistant? Heck, Cliff, that's pretty harsh. I don't pay him yet. We are a growing business and my partner is smart enough to bet on this great opportunity. Weird. That's pretty much the same that Clarence told me about the shop. Uh, right, right. <laughs> okay. Well, moving on. Come on, kid. Let's find something else that's newsworthy. Alright. Wow. Um... Oh, okay, there we go. Whoa, what a news day. Things just keep piling up. The mysterious book, the cultivating in the town, Clarence Day going over businesses, Sergeant Pecker keeping Jeff behind bars for no reason. Breaking news. Heck, this isn't snowballing. This is an avalanche of escalating weird little things. This is Cliff Rockslide with local news. Our town looks pretty peaceful while resting in the summer sun, right? Well, that serenity is quite deceiving because under the surface, the temperature is rising. You can even see the first bubbles, the inevitable signs of some serious boiling about to start soon. Why is cultivating our streets and scaring the local residents with their angular attitudes? Why do those pumpkins keep on bloating like a rapper's self-esteem? <laughs> Why is the local police force telling us that no explosion happened two days ago when the loyal followers of the stream witnessed it with their own precise eyes? And why does the very same local police force keep the driver of that truck in jail as if it was, uh, if it was just an accident? Is driving into a pothole a federal crime now, or has the Butterfly Valley police taken the law into their own hands? And the biggest question of all, why is our backwards, backwards version of the media mogul, Clarence Spud, connected to all these things? Damn. He's invading our local businesses and turning them into stores for his gigantic vegetables. What's his plan? What's up with all the secrets? Does anyone know? And if you have, And as you've noticed, these people are getting really alarmed by our presence and try to silence the voice of the truth with everything they can. 
That's a sure sign we're getting close to something important. As you can see, there's plenty of unanswered questions around here. Cliff Rockslide is dedicated to bringing you the truth. Remember to subscribe. My dear audience, we will continue hunting the answers. I know where to look next. Follow my lead. Reporting. Hello? Why am I stuck? Oh. Because I was behind a car. Great. What's going on, mate? You don't look so good. Cheers, Cliff. I want a bit of a pickle here. The explosion scared everyone off. I've had zero customers since the boom. So because of the boom, your economy isn't... booming? Sorry, badly timed joke. Is there anything I can do for you? I need lots of money. You're running a news stream, so... I don't think so. Oh boy, Clarence is gonna be knocking on my door pretty soon. Clarence? What do you mean? He was the one who invested in my sausage cart in the first place. I tried some crowdfunding first, but for some reason selling wieners and backlands isn't the hottest trend of startup business. That man has his claws everywhere. Yeah, but he also has money. Basically, he's the bank of Butterfly Valley. Our local walking piggy bank. What are you going to do? Nothing. Everything's fine. I found solitude and believe in something much greater than me. The metric house has provided me with alternate means of thinking. Everything's about geometry when you just learn to see it. What? Don't tell me you joined their cult. Oh, brother. A cult? No, no. Like I said, it's all about geometry, so it's actually based on science. That's why so many of their teachings make sense. Why would I worry about Clarence and money and stuff when I can focus on perfecting my dimensions? Because Danny Dumbbell will make you perfectly two-dimensional if you don't pay Clarence? Oh, well, yeah, that's true. Besides, I have some serious doubts about the cult's interests. Uh, I'm saying this to you- I'm saying this to you as your best friend. They have something to hide. Like what? A tail, maybe? That's why they wear those robes. I don't know yet, but there's definitely something. A <laughs> tail, maybe? I think Clarence, those giant vegetables, that weird explosion, and this cult are all connected somehow. Look, Cliff, my life is finally starting to make sense to me. Why can't you just be happy for me? I'm close to finding my purpose. That's great and all, but I'm telling you, something's off. I don't know what you're talking about. You should come and visit their camp. They're organizing as some sort of a gathering the day after tomorrow. Really? Why? Just a get-together, where the villagers in the metric house are getting to know each other. The villagers. Yep, there's plenty of us geometry-curious acolytes. Don't trust a word they say. The metric house is not what it seems. And who might you be? Someone who spent the whole summer with them will spend the next summer on a nude beach. Just to be sure that no one near me is wearing any robes. <laughs> Just stay away from the metric house. You don't know what's deep inside. Oh, you must be the skeptical cult member my assistant told me about. Would you like to answer a few questions? Definitely not. I'm getting as far away as I can get from this place. No, wait. Dang. She could have provided us with answers, but I guess she's gone now. What's your take on this, Doug? Enough to convince you about the dangers of Metric House? Are you listening to some random stigmatizer rather than your friend? I'm not doing anything dangerous. I'm just trying to be happy. Come on, Doug. You're a reasonable fellow. What proof do you need? I don't need any proof. I need support. This is a big thing for me, and I'd like my friends to understand me. Being your friend is the exact reason why I'm trying to talk you out of this. I know these people, and they're not up for good. Not up for good? Cliff, I wish I wouldn't have... I would never have to do this. But your personal discounts have been revoked. For good. Fine. Even with the discounts, your prices were twice the normal. Now you're just saying things to hurt me. I hope that metric day brings peace... Brings peace to you as well when it comes. Man, I'm really worried about him. We're gonna help Doug somehow. I think we should chat with Ricks. She's probably already at the coffee shop waiting. Yeah, I think I'll do this and then uh, call it. This should be the end of the day, hopefully. Hi, Cliff. Cheers, Ricks and Bob. You won't believe what I found out. Great, finally some answers. Uh, mostly questions, but interesting ones. The plot keeps thickening. Clarence is definitely our main operator here. He's taking over my dad's farm business, even Hot Dog Sausage Emporium. Don't forget my hardware store. That's weird. How come this wasn't in the Herald? Never mind, I get it. Owning a newspaper tends to have some benefits. Are Haas and Clarence doing business together? I find that hard to imagine. Likewise, yesterday they were about to start a fist fight, but Clarence has some kind of leverage over Haas. Hmm, I wonder what that is. But you don't think Haas is volunteering in cahoots with Clarence? I'm willing to bet money on that. 
As soon as you burst through that ridiculous subscriber limit and start getting some ad income. Okay, any other news? Well, the cult is also involved in this mess. They're somehow connected to that explosive stuff inside those fancy barrels. The cult leader got really upset when I called the stuff in the canister's manure. Haas, Clarence, Colt, and that mystical explosive ingredient from the core of the mystery. Form the core of the mystery, sorry. I think we can cross Haas off the list. He's just trying to make a living and he clearly doesn't enjoy working with Clarence. Are you sure you don't just say that because he's your dad? Have I ever let the personal relationships come between me and journalism? You're right. Actually, I know that a bit too well. Sorry, I didn't mean to... No, no, we had to talk about it. Because this is the point I'm really starting to get out of the line, and I'm really uncomfortable doing that with you. What? And you probably know why. This is about the badger, right? You know it is. What can I do? I was a young journalist looking for a scoop who got a piece of unique data on his hands. What did you expect to happen? What I told you was off the record. I told it to you as a friend, not a source. You were supposed to put that badger down after it rummaged through the museum. But instead you let it free and it bit the power cable, causing the biggest blackout the town has ever experienced. Oh, so I'm the bad guy here because I didn't kill an animal? And are you, you're the hero of the day because you re revealed that in the Herald? Clarence twisted my arm to publish it. Because that badger came from his hunting grounds. He probably bred them at the time. He needed a scapegoat and you handed me to him on a silver plate. I didn't know that back then. I was young and naive. I didn't understand what kind of person he was. And when you did find out, you apologized to me and did everything to make it right? Or did you just kind of shrug it off and continue with your life? Um, I... Do you know how hard it is for a person like me to be treated as a professional police officer? Well, I didn't just continue with my life. It caused me problems for years. When you're working with someone like Pecker and you don't want things like this, uh... When you're working with someone like Pecker, you don't want things like this to happen. I still lack credibility on the station because you couldn't keep your mouth shut. That's, uh... You're right, I'm... I'm sorry. I really am. In fact, I've been sorry this, for this whole time. Just lack the courage to tell you. Well, this is why I opened this conversation. Because we're headed straight to the gray zone, and I need to know if I can trust you, if you've changed in any way. And luckily you have. I accept your apology. I also really appreciate you for not making any jokes for two solid minutes. That was really painful for you. It truly really shows that you are willing to suffer for your friends. I'm glad that from now on you only have to carry a badge, and not a badger, on your chest. That was so awful that I know you're really, you really got upset for me. Thank you, Cliff. Powerful stuff. Just wow. Oh, Bob, I kind of forgot you were there. No, no, that was really awesome. Some honest talk, some true emotions. Nice, just nice. Right, we probably need to formulate some sort of plan. Any ideas? Clarence seems to be our guy, and Bob mentioned some interesting plans he uh, he had seen in Clarence's mansion. Want to share them? With pleasure. I think Clarence is creating something bigger than taking over the town. I did some contract work for him some time ago. Some really crazy cool stuff with a strange unknown material. Let me guess, it comes in space barrels. Yeah, cool blue lights and everything. That's the same stuff Haas uses, uh, uses at his farm. Anyways, I built this whole science experiment in his mansion. A whole shebang with self-sustaining power production and all. Powered by the manure? Well, yeah. But the manure seems to be much more than just the fertilizer. I think we should start by connecting the dots of Clarence and his mystery stuff inside the barrels. Yeah, we can expand from there. In other news, the cultists were organizing some kind of gathering day for the villagers the day after tomorrow, and we better be there. Which leaves us plenty of time to investigate Clarence. Sounds reasonable. We can forget about the search warrant. Pecker's made it clear that it's out of the question. Really? What's your take on his role in this? This is not the first time I'm hearing about connections between those two. I'm not sure. The way he's been dealing with Jeb raised my concerns, but we don't... We need proof. Sounds like a job for us. So, field day tomorrow, then? I'll get my gear in order. This is not going to be easy, you know. Or legal. <laughs> but it's going to be exciting. Great. Let's meet Clarence's house, then. Nice work, by the way. You'd make a decent private investigator, Cliff. You mean doing all this work without taking any public credit for it? Just sending a case by handling by handing a file to some poor loner? Doesn't sound like me. You're right, it doesn't. <laughs> it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Streamer stirs concern. Deranged internet video providers have been harassing good people at Butterfly Valley during the past few days. 